For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. For the wages of sin is death. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Every man will die. Every man that is born of a woman is born into trouble and is born to die. Death is more sure than taxes. The Bible proclaims that death will happen because of sin. Preach. 
preaching of the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. We don't want your money. We don't want you to follow us. We want you to take the Bible and live the Bible and believe that Jesus Christ saves and only Jesus Christ saves. That's a far call from your television and radio preaching. We're not going to take a collection. We're going to prove to you that the Bible says that the very salvation you need to set is upon Jesus Christ, the shed blood, wrought by God. Acts 20:28 20, says that God is Jesus, and Jesus is God by that blood atonement upon Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Oh, I want the love of God. The love of God is Jesus Christ. I'm not scaring people away. Just have someone give us a hug, sir. Open your blind eyes and see that Jesus saves. Your eyes are blinded by Satan. You need to come to the saving grace of the blood of Jesus Christ before you die, and you will die. And you can't say, preacher, I've never sinned. Because the day you, the day that you die, I can look in your casket and say, you're a sinner. You're not listening, but you're a sinner. You wouldn't listen while you're alive. The Bible says that there is an afterlife, people. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And most will go to hell because they will reject the finished work of Jesus Christ. Few will go into those heavenly gates by the faith and trust of their heart that Jesus Christ can settle their account with his blood. The, the, the account was settled long ago upon a hill called Calvary where Jesus Christ willingly nailed himself to that cross and died and shed his blood that we may have eternal life. Today, September 2nd, you are hearing the greatest news of all the news of the world. You are hearing that Jesus Christ arose from that grave and you can have victorious life by the shed blood of Jesus Christ to gain into heaven. This is the news that needs to be heard in Texas, California, Indonesia, China. This is the message of God to all the world. And God has put it for Daytona Beach, Florida, to send us here to hear that you need and must be born again. You may not like it. You may not care about it. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God said to us, go ye in all the world, Daytona Beach, and preach that gospel. It's in the Bible, man. And church I, is not going to save you. You know, I, I'm not going to say much, but... I, I go to a wonderful church. I, I go right here, as a matter of fact. Uh, Mount Carmel, Missionary Baptist Church. But to preach the hate part of it. You and I have to hear, hear me out. What, where's the hate? Uh, what you're saying is the, is, is the dark part of it. Just the dark part. And I understand it's in the Bible. But you have to trust who you find it. And I understand, I understand the dark part. Because I'm a believer. You know, Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. He had crowds. But, but, but are you drawing people? What is your mission? You're not trying to draw people, you're trying to save them from the fire. These people are going to die. These people are going to die. They need to go to hell. You're trying to save them from the fire. way ahead of me, so I'm not going to argue with you. But as, as a person, just as a person, and I happen to believe, I do believe you're preaching the wrong angle. And that's all I'm saying. Well, Paul went to Bible. jail for preaching the same thing. Uh, it's okay. I don't think you got dropped. Jesus got put on a cross for preaching the same thing. I don't think you got dropped. I don't know what we're not trying to drop people. We're trying to save them from hell. 
The love of God is Jesus Christ. This woman thinks it's hate, and she goes to church. And I've read from John 3.16. Lady, you need to look at your salvation with God, because what we're doing is we're preaching what God said, John 3.16. I give you the scriptures that Jesus saved. That's hate. Don't say Jesus saved. Say free hot dogs. You're full. You're going to face God one day. The Bible says, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Now, i got a better instrument here where I don't have to scream on top of my lungs. The sound can be heard. And the sound to be heard is that Jesus saves. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the love of God.
something you want. Yeah. Oh, you're getting angry. No, I'm getting preached. I'm getting excited. I love God. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of salvation. One day you're going to face death. You're going to take that last breath. Now, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke that you can wake up with your eyeballs and your tongue in hell and torment. That's one choice. You do that by religion. You do that by atheism. You do that by agnostic. You do that by being a Muslim. You do that by Mary. You go to hell. Or Paul says, you can die and be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I am washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. If I were to drop dead right now on this pavement, I will see Jesus. Instantly. The rupture may happen right now. The Lord may call his church. If you have not believed on Jesus, you will be left behind. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's nothing else. We have one thing in common. Whether I be white, you be black, you be brown, you be male, you be female. We have one thing in common. We're sinners. If you have not sinned, let me talk to your parents. If you're not a sinner, let me talk to your spouse. One lie makes you a sinner. Stealing something makes you a sinner. And you have sin on your account. You need to be washed of your sin. And the only detergent that God will take for your sin washing is the blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God will take away your sin. And when the Lamb takes away your sin, you can stand in the presence of the Holy God that says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. If you can hear my voice, I am talking to you. You will die and you will face God. I don't care if you don't believe in God. I don't believe, I don't care who you think God is. If it's not the God of the Bible, if it's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you have got the wrong God. If your God is a female, it's the wrong God. If your God is stone or wood or paper, the Bible says that's idolatry and that's the sin. You are not going to heaven with idolatry. Put that God in the ground for three days and three nights and see if it comes up on its own. They put my God in a tomb three days and three nights and it's sealed. And up on the third day he arose victorious. You know why I'm a Christian? Because I believe on the God that arose from the grave. Where are the popes? Still in the dirt. Where's Muhammad? Still in the dirt. That's not a God if it's still in the ground. My preacher, he's going to die. And he's going to be in the ground. And three days and three nights later, he's still going to be in the ground. It's not a God. Your baptism, put it in the ground. Probably within 30 minutes, he'll be gone. 
church membership. Put it in the ground. Three days later, where is it? Still in the ground. Listen, you can't have a coffee religion where it's still ground. You've got to have something that's risen from the grave. Uh, he loses, buddy. You're going to wish one day you believed on Jesus Christ. The end of the book says that Satan was cast into the lake of fire that burned it forever. That's a loser. For the love of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are no different from Adam and Eve in the garden. God told Adam, do not eat that fruit. Do not. And he ate it. God says, today believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You won't do it. You know what the number one sin of man is? Even as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, one of my sins is I don't listen to God all the time. And neither do you. Not everybody here is saved. And not everybody here is coming up and saying, Oh, what do I need to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, folks, you know, this, you're too loud. Hey, get something new, will you? Come on, it's like the same commercial every over and over. The Bible says, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. You're sinners. If I can quote, I believe it's not copyright, but if I can quote from a famous message. No, I forgot. Benjamin Franklin. Sinners in the hand of an angry God, something like that. Listen, people. I'm going to say from the public to buy at least someone's pastor here. Okay? God does not love you if you do not believe on his son, Jesus Christ. There is no love without Jesus Christ. Now, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Man, will you flush that down the toilet? Because God does not love the sinner. John the Baptist said that he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Where do you get love out of that? You might as well say an abusive husband really loves his wife when he beats her up. Foolish by saying that. You're so foolish to say that God loves sinners. When God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, when I sin, my fellowship is broken from God. Until I get right and repent. And as sinners in the hands of an angry God, that's it. You have no mercy. You have no grace. You have no fellowship with God outside of rejecting Jesus Christ. You are not okay. And don't let your pastor or anybody in your church think you're okay without Jesus Christ because you're not. I've said that religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Can we agree on one thing that you're going to die? Can we agree on that? You've got a tombstone coming in your future. I think I can be as prophetic on that application there that we're all going to die. And if you think you're going to live forever, stand in the middle of this road for four hours, and we'll see how much of a fool you are. But we can agree on one thing. Death is sure. After that, what? 
What is your afterlife? And what's the Bible say? And you don't care what the Bible says, but when you die, you will care what the Bible says. Because the Bible's right. God is right. And you are wrong. And when you die, you will face God. And to be on God's right side, it's Jesus Christ. To be on the wrathful, the wrathful side of God is anything but Jesus. And you got to be forewarned, too, because Paul tells us that there is another Jesus. A Jesus that you eat is not going to save you. A Jesus that hangs between your breasts is not going to save you. Because let me tell you what the Bible says. He was taken down off that cross. You may not like me, but God loves me through Jesus Christ, so put the signs up. Don't bother me. I'm still going to preach Jesus. Jesus Christ was taken off that cross. What are you doing putting him back on? On gold, silver, wood, or whatever you do. My Jesus, the godly Jesus, the approved of God, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. What are you going to do with that? I've got a Jesus you cannot bound. I've got a Jesus that you're sure not going to put him back on the cross. I'd like to see you try. And when you got a Jesus that's still on the cross, you ain't got the biblical Jesus. Now, excuse me for saying ain't, but I like that word. And it's in the dictionary. I looked it up. You people don't realize. And the Bible says you don't because you are in darkness. I'm trying to prepare you for death. It'd be like, let's say this bridge is gone. It fell. It broke. It was destroyed. I would stand here as a fool and not try to tell you driving. And watch you drive over something that's not there and fall into the river and possibly die. I'd be a fool. But if I were to warn you that that bridge is out, stop. Don't go any further. You can listen or you can go and fall in and die and be stupid. And what I'm telling you is the bridge is out at death. The bridge is gone for you. You cannot cross over to heaven. The bridge is out. In order to cross over to God at death, you've got to come to Calvary and exit by the empty tomb. That's what gets you to God. There is no other way. Preach the gospel. Jesus died according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There is no other way. And again, your attitude proves the Bible. But also, we are doing what the Bible says. And it's a wonder for people who don't read their Bible, come up and tell me what the Bible says. I've only read it 20 times through, if not more. I've only studied every single book of the Bible. Counseling all the degrees that I've got. 
So it will be the lake of fire. When you fall into it, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you. Good to see you. It's funny, it's how, how can my eagle be so big? You don't even know who my name is, but you've heard Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, how you doing? If I had a big eagle and up here, it would be all about my name and dot com. Call my toll-free number and give me money and I'll give you something stupid. There's no eagle here. I'm lifting. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ says, I have tasted of that bread. I have drank of that water. I have got the eternal life. And I'm overflowing with the testimony that Jesus can save you as he saved me, a miserable sinner. I just got something you don't. Maybe you're jealous. I've got something that beer can't take care of. I don't need drugs. I'm high on Jesus. And I mean I'm high on Jesus because the Bible says those that are saved are seated in heavenly places. I just haven't got my body there yet. I will one day. I'm not ashamed of my Savior. I'm not ashamed of the wave of heaven. I've had not one person come up and try to give me their religion. Not one person. And I drive the Jehovah Witnesses away. You don't want them at their house. You like me over. I'll get rid of Jehovah Witnesses as I witness to you about Jesus Christ. And maybe that's a little bit. There, there's my ego trip for the day. Okay? Chark it up. Ego. Let's get back to Jesus. You were asked these people, what name do you hear out of that street preacher? I know what they're going to say. Jesus. There's no sweeter, greater name ever but Jesus Christ. There is no better salvation. And I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic. Jesus is so much better. The assurance that the true Jesus gives you. The peace that God will give you through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you another question. If you were to die today, are you assured of where you will go? Assure, without a shadow of a doubt. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13 I know where I'm going. Whether I die as a good boy or if I die as a bad boy, I know where I'm going. And you can too. You can know the security of believing on Jesus Christ to be saved. You can know. And you can go to heaven. We're not telling you to go to hell. We're telling you to go to heaven. By Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. And it's amazing the word of God stands. The guy over here took his signs down. Come on, where's your Satan? Where is your Satan that rule? He's in the hospital making people sicker. He's making someone drink beer right now to get in an accident to kill a family. Satan has no mercy. He has no grace. But Jesus Christ can save your miserable, rotten, sinful soul. Satan can't do that. The Bible says he is the liar. Satan is the murderer. And Satan is going in the lake of fire 
and you will join him too if you do not believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. And there'll be no party or no alcohol with Satan in hell. How's that for a lie? Oh, we're going to boogie woogie in hell. That's a lie from Satan. God loves the sinners. That's a lie from Satan. You have better chances with a used car salesman than you do with Satan. His signs are down. Ours are still standing. I have lived my life in religion. I have lived my life in the absence of God. I have lived my life as a saved, born-again Christian. And I will take that life of a being a born-again Christian over all the rest. There is no satisfaction in anything but Jesus Christ. And the question is, what must you do to go to heaven? What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I would hate to have God have to make you eat your words at the great white zone judgment. And I'm not foolish enough to think that, hey, my journey of you I'm not going to see in New Jerusalem. Truth be known of the Bible. If one person in New Jerusalem would come up to me, I'd say, I want to thank you for that, that ministry you had at that farmer's market. One person. This message will be worth it all. Because you're preaching every week at that farmer's market. You changed my life. I don't know how. Maybe you got saved or maybe they get, became a better Christian. I don't know. It'd be worth it all. But 99% of you, I'm going to see you at the, at the great white throne judgment as God will pass you off in the lake of fire that burns forever. And you cannot ever tell God, I never knew. Because you've heard. You've heard that Jesus saves. You cannot give God an excuse on why you have not heard the way, the truth, and the life. You will not be able to tell God, oh, I had no idea what I was supposed to do. And I had that in Ezekiel. I won't be able to find it right now, but I am Daytona Beach's watchman. As far as the farmer's market, at least. God told Ezekiel, you go warn them. And by the way, they won't listen. Imagine God telling Ezekiel, go preach, and they're not going to listen. That's what's happening right now, pretty much. But God told Ezekiel, go tell them. Tell them my words. And they're not going to listen. And when they come to me and say, hey, I was never told. Well, Ezekiel told you. Ezekiel's clean. Because he has preached my word. And God told Ezekiel, if you do not preach, you are going to be guilty of that soul that you did not tell. Now, God has given me this ministry. He says, listen, go tell them what I said. Jesus saves. And if they don't listen, that's their fault. If a little sign says Satan rules, 
not guilty. I am not ashamed of the words week after week after work. Week. I pray that you would get right with God. But I know for the majority it's not going to happen. You people are living out the Bible today. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot. And then judgment came quickly. One day you're going to find out what the true love of God is by sending a loud mouth. And it saddens me that for most of you it will be too late. But I still must preach the message that Jesus saves. There is a hell. There is a... Warning. There is foul language from the public following this video. Death. And it's coming. So uh, how many homeless people you taking home with you today, Jesus? None. Yeah, none, exactly. Yeah. So Jesus would take them all home. Really? Y'all take that goddamn hat off. Tell yeah. me where. Uh, tell me where. Here, here's the Bible. It's people, tell me the Bible where he took them home. And you don't know nothing. Yeah. Uh, you don't know nothing. He did not take poor, the homeless person home. The poor, he didn't even have a home. He didn't have a place to lay his head. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't my God. You ain't my Jesus. I'm never God. I'm not Jesus. Yeah. Why I'm you, just why don't you a born-again Bible-believing Christian. Just get the fuck out of here. You like the Constitution of the United States of America? Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, I, I have the right to be here. That is correct. I have the right to be here. I'm a, you want to see the uh, United States Air Force veteran. Don't well, thank you for your Bible, service, brother. Here. That, here's, that, the, here's the declaration. No, uh, and here's the here's the laws. Of I the got state. three. I got three copies. Okay. Well, yeah, but y'all wrong, man. Well, you'll find out one day when you face God that oh, you're I'm, wrong. I ain't afraid of facing God. You're a fool. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm you're wrong. Out of the Bible. Yeah. If you won't take these guys home, those homeless guys. Do you know the story of those homeless guys? You know what most of their stories are? Don't don't fuck with me, man. Well, nice language. You want to watch in front of my daughter? I don't want that language. Well, your daughter don't be belong out here either. Oh, yeah, she does. These, these you, what do you want her? A cigarette? You want her a beer? You want her, you know, fancy pancy all that? Is that what you want her? Yeah, you want her half here. naked on the beach. Oh, you would love to see her half naked you're on the beach, wouldn't you? Fucking mind. I don't care about her. You're out are of here. Are there aliens? You said her. Are there aliens, Mr. Air Force guy? I bet you believe in aliens out there, boy. Fuck you, Fuck you. Have a good day. Don't come out here anymore, right? We can come Are you threatening me? Want. Are you threatening me? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. You just said yeah. Yeah, you That's said on yeah. video. It's on video. Anything happens, you're to blame. You know God. God Jesus would take the homeless home. I, I handed him the Bible, people, and he couldn't tell me the Bible. And yet the message is the same that Jesus saves. I'm not Jesus. I am not God. I am a sinner just as you are. If I ever proclaim to be God or Jesus Christ, I apologize. You never have. Well, I just want to make sure, in this case, you know, I just want to make sure you know that I am not God. Or something. I'm not Jesus. I preach Jesus. I preach the salvation of Jesus Christ. And yet that man will be homeless one day without God in hell. The Bible says for those that believe on Jesus Christ, they get a home. In fact, it's better than a home. It's called a mansion. Some Bibles pervert it. And if a homeless man gets saved, he'll get a mansion. And that's only by Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus. And you, like, I'll get back to where I was, you're going to face death one day. You will die. And you will walk off into eternity. 
And without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. Don't give me that hell. Then tell your friends, stop saying go to hell. When we tell you how to get to heaven, by the one that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You will face God. Prepare to meet thy God, and then you'll be quaking in your shoes. So they're yelling at other people, too. You've been warned. <laughs> there is coming a day when you will meet God. You'll meet Him on His good side by Jesus. Or you will meet Him on His wrathful side without Jesus. The love of God is not someone that's rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. You cannot be on the right side of God without Jesus Christ. God hates sin. And He is angry and wrathful at those that will not believe on the Son. that stuff in schools today, but it's very important to know when you put an ED, that means it's past, it's not present. You will be put in the hands of an angry God without Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are, God doesn't care who you are. Only thing God sees is Jesus Christ. No Jesus, no life. That blood that Jesus shed, according to Acts 20:28, 20, is God's blood. You better have the Jesus that's God and God that is Jesus. You're not safe if you don't. Come on, what is better, what is more better that's, than Jesus? What can you offer me that's better than God and Jesus Christ? How is your life today? How is it when you got trials and tribulations without Jesus? How is your life? When that pill bottle gets empty and you ain't got money to fill it, where salvation and the peace of God is free. How is it? How is it upon your bed when you're going to face death and you're going to fear? You're going to be terrified. You're going to want to come back. And you can't. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For I have believed on the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you safe and secure in the arms of your small G, God? Whatever that is. Do you know when you die where you will be of a surety?
I mean, I don't know. But today may be the last day you have. You don't know. We live in a country today, you can walk in a store and someone can open fire. We're getting people that are getting knifed to death. Or you just make us close your eyes and die. Then where will you be? What will your eternal soul be? Heavenly peace or wrathful of God, the lake of fire? And you know what the worst thing about going to hell here from Daytona Beach Farmer's Market? You've been told how not to go to hell. You have been warned of what is in hell. And you still choose to go. If I had never met a greater fool in my life is a person that will not adhere to what God has said. John said, there's no greater joy than here that my children walk in truth. And yet, in Satan rules, you are walking in a lie. And the day that that lie becomes real, that moment when you realize that you have been deceived by Satan, it's too late. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's it. That is it. With your heart, repent and get right with God by Jesus Christ. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. You need Jesus Christ. your choice. My time's up. But you may not hear, Lord willing, you may not hear this message next week. Maybe some of you, one of you are going to be departed into what we preach. But there is coming a hell. And there's coming a heaven. And heaven is by Jesus Christ alone. Hell, just do whatever you want to do or don't do what you want to do. It's simple to go to hell, too. No, this ain't hell. Because I'm not going to hell by Jesus Christ, so this can't be hell. And hell is so much harder. <laughs> There's no water. And no water. And no luscious tomatoes. No laughter. No. Beauty. No. You better thank God that God has sent faithful men to preach the word to you. Because one day, either or, you will bow the knee and proclaim Jesus is the Lord. I proclaim Jesus is the Lord by the blood atonement, by the, by the gospel. He died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. I can say Jesus is Lord. But if you are not saved... What? Smile. Smile. Smiling. Can't see behind that 
beard. All right. What was I saying? Keep an eye on him. I know. I'm trying to make sure he doesn't mess with our food. And that he arose from the dead, according to the scriptures. There's coming a day, death is coming. And it may come sooner than you think. 